How do you protect all this valuable gear from getting scratched or damaged? I'm going to talk about it on today's episode of Ask David Bergman. Hey there, everybody. Welcome back. Here I am, as always, answering your photography questions. If you've got photo questions, you know what to do by now. You just go to askdavidbergman.com. Submit your question right there on the site. I just might pick it to answer here on a future show. A couple of quick notes before we get too deep into the show. Uh, I'm back with my live concert photography workshops. I've got a few coming up in Canada this March, and there may be some more announced in the United States very soon. I hope you'll check that out at shootfromthepit.com. You can sign up for the email list, and you'll be notified as soon as I announce new workshops. Also, this is kind of crazy, but the iHeartRadio Music Awards are coming up in March, and they have a new category the last few years, Favorite Tour Photographer, and I actually got nominated this year. Uh, I'm bringing it up because, first of all, thank you, iHeartRadio. Uh, it's such an honor to be nominated in this category, but uh, it is a fan vote award, so I'm appealing to all of you out there. If you are a fan of my work, either with Luke Combs or Bon Jovi or Sports Illustrated, or you just like these videos, I really appreciate. Um, if you can go vote for me at those awards, uh, I'll put a link down below. If you're in the US, Canada, New Zealand, or Australia, you can vote on the site. You get 50 votes a day. You can vote every single day. And then you can also tweet about it from anywhere in the world. Those are single votes if you tweet it. So uh, thanks so much. A little shameless uh, plug getting that out there. But I, I am incredibly honored to be uh, nominated for this. So thank you to iHeartRadio for getting that. I'm just happy they have the tour photographer category in a major mainstream award show. I think it's cool to bring, I've been trying to bring respect back to the art and the craft of tour photography for decades now. So it's nice to see uh, the category being recognized. All right, let's get to today's show. I've got a question sent in from Bernie L. And Bernie wants to know, can you provide tips for taking care of and protecting camera equipment and accessories? All right, Bernie, so this is something obviously we all think about, right? When we talk about this, there's really two kinds of protection, right? The first is protecting our gear from things like scratches and really cosmetic damage. And then there's not actually breaking it when we're traveling or you know transporting our gear from one place to another. So first let's talk briefly about cosmetic damage. Here's the thing, there's a number of things you can do. You can only really do so much when you're out and about using the gear. Um, it is gonna sometimes get, you know, just show normal wear and tear. That's, that's really normal with used gear. Obviously it's gonna be a little beat up. Um, I worry more about uh, if it's functional, if the glass is clean and the sensor is clean, right? So I did a, a video and asked David Bergman about cleaning the sensor. Uh, and I will put a link down below to that video. I get really deep into all the different ways you can do it. Um, but you can uh, keep that sensor clean. You can clean it yourself. You can send it in. There's a number of different methods there. Um, as far as lenses, to keep the lenses clean, um, I will often use a blower brush, like, excuse me, just a blower like this. And when my caps are off, if there's just a little dust or sand or something like that gets in there, you can just blow that away. And that's the first line of defense. Um, some photographers will also have like a really fine horsehair brush that you can use to just sweep away some things. I honestly don't have one of those. Um, it's not something I use really often. I don't find that I get too much uh, really on uh, my the glass itself because I do keep my caps on. I'll talk more about that in a few minutes. But then if you really also have something that the brush or the blower is not getting rid of, you then you just use a cloth, one of these microfiber cloths. This is from my friends at ProGrade Digital. Um, and I have a whole bunch of these in every camera bag. I keep a few in there. And I will just use that to clean the front lens element or occasionally the back lens element, the body side. Um, and the way you want to do that is you just want to start in the middle and kind of do concentric circles out. Obviously, you want to have cleared away any obvious debris, sand, dust, things like that first, because then you're just going to scratch it on that lens. And that's not something you want to do. Um, so that's really all I'm going to do with that. As far as the surface, of you know the exterior here. Again, I don't worry about it too much. Some photographers will use camera skins uh, when you first get new gear, whether it's a body or a lens, and they actually make skins that you can put over. They have like camouflage versions and kind of cool looking ones that you can put over your entire gear and it's, and it's formed to fit perfectly and it shows through all of your dials and things like that so you have access to them. Not something I personally use. I, I'm a tactile person. I like to really feel the camera. I, I feel like that um, sort of neoprene uh, covering on the outside. It's a little squishy and I just don't like that feeling, but it definitely will protect your gear from basic, you know, scratches and brassing and things like that that are gonna happen. 
I, to me, my gear is a tool. I know I'm gonna, it's gonna get a little beat up. As long as it's functional, I'm gonna take as good a care of it as I can. So that's really as far as um, the cosmetic stuff. But I do think a lot more and worry a lot more about protecting my gear when I'm moving it, right? So I will, of course, use a case. What kind of case you use depends on really your needs, how much gear you have, and really how much protection you need. Uh, the most simplest kind, let's see what I got down here, is something like this. This is a, what we call a messenger bag, right? This is a think tank. This is the Urban Approach 10. Uh, it's probably an old model at this point, but I've had this for a long time. And basically, um, it will fit probably a body or two, maybe one body, two lenses. Maybe you can throw a flash in there as well. Um, but this kind of thing, you throw it over your shoulder and it's gonna do a good job. I don't have any of the dividers in there, but they do have dividers so that you, your gear isn't rubbing up against each other, which you wanna to try to avoid when possible. Um, one step up from that will be something like this. This is a same kind of thing. I'm twisted up here, let's see. Same kind of thing, but obviously a bigger version. This is a Canon model, um, but this is gonna hold a lot more gear. You're gonna be able to get two, three bodies in here and two, three, four lenses in here. Um, and there's external pockets for accessories and cards and maybe a flash or something like that. So um, those two things are gonna give you some protection, um, a pretty good amount of protection, but just for walking around town and things like that. Obviously you wouldn't check that on the airplane or anything like that, but it's gonna do a pretty good job. Uh, one step up from that would be something like this. There we go. This is a think tank roller. Um, I have so many bags, embarrassingly so, that I haven't even used this one yet. It still has the, uh, I've probably had it for a year and I have literally not uh, opened it. But uh, this is the, which one is this? The Airport Advantage uh, XT, right? Uh, and it's, you know, nice material. It's, it's kind of soft on the outside, but it really does offer good protection. This is a roller bag. So if you've got enough gear to fill that, then that is definitely something uh, you wanna use. Uh, what I use for my personal gear, I use the little bit bigger version of that, the uh, airport security it's called, and I have all of my gear in there. And the key when you're using a case like that is those dividers. You really wanna set it up so the dividers are nice, as snug as you can get them against your gear. So they really just press up against your gear and you can slot that gear in there so it doesn't rattle around, right? As you move that bag, as you put it in the overhead or put it in your trunk or just roll around with it through town, you really wanna make sure that those dividers are in there very tight. And they, these bags come with so many dividers. Um, I have extras all over the studio and um, you know, you're never gonna use them all. So they give you a lot of options. Some of them are hard, some of them are softer, and that's gonna help. Um, the final step up from that, I'm not gonna pick it up, but I have a Pelican case back here. Pelican makes cases for other industries and it's a hard case. They do make a roller case as well um, with those dividers. So that is a hard case. It's airtight sealed so that some of them, and, and make sure you get the right one if you need this, will even, they're weather, uh, excuse me, waterproof. So you can literally throw it in the lake and it'll float and will not get water in it at all. So if you need that kind of protection, you're gonna go with something like a Pelican. I find the think tank rollers to be the, a nice middle ground between sort of a soft case that's lighter but yet um, holds all my gear and keeps it really well protected. Now, you may have noticed what I do when I put my gear in those cases, I remove the lenses from the bodies. I know some photographers don't do that. Some photographers will leave them attached. I just feel like having them attached when they're like this, I feel like you need some support underneath that lens because if the bag gets dropped, even just a foot or so, that, that sort of impact, I feel like this is a point of failure right here. This lens mount is really a, an extreme point of failure and you do not want any pressure put on that. Now, I know photographers who travel that way for years and years and have never had a problem and that's awesome. For me personally, I like to take them off. I remove all the lenses when I'm done with my shoot and I put everything away in its little place um, and I feel like that's gonna give me the most protection and it really only takes me a few seconds to do. So it's not, I'm not the kind of photographer who's a, a spot news photographer where I have to grab a, a setup right away out of a bag and start shooting. If you're using one of those messenger bags or a waste bag system or something like that, then you, know, you definitely wanna keep things together and ready to go. I don't shoot that way, so it's not something I worry about. Now, other little cases and things, when you buy some of these lenses, some of them, especially the sort of the higher end 2.8 lenses and things like that, they come in a case like this. This is a Canon one. Um, this is how it comes in when you buy it in the box. Um, I take my lenses out of here and then I never see this again. <laughs> Honestly, I don't use this. It does offer a little bit of protection, but I feel like putting my lens in here and then putting this in the bag, I'm not gonna be able to see what lens is in here. And it's just, 
it's just an extra nuisance and I don't feel like it's necessary. I do keep these because when I sell the lens, um, and I am actually selling some gear right now, but when I sell the lens, I will put it back in here and put it back in the box so it's back with all its accessories and all that. But that's really the only reason I keep those. The other thing I do in the case is I keep my lens hoods on, right? So these lens hoods, I don't even know if they can come off because I never take this, this hood off. Um, it goes on, it stays on. It's just another bit of protection uh, when things get bounced around and things get bumped around, this is gonna take the impact. This is a relatively inexpensive piece of plastic and that's a very expensive piece of glass. So I'd rather the impact be taken by this hood. I can always replace the hood much cheaper than I can replace the lens. So uh, I don't use filters on my lenses. A lot of people do. That is one way you can protect it with a clear UV filter. Personally, I feel like the hood is gonna give me enough protection. The only exception may be um, with a long lens like this, I will flip this lens hood around because it's just too big if I was to put it on that way. Uh, it's gonna take up a lot of extra space in the bag. So I will flip that one around. But otherwise, um, I'm keeping them all in the set position like that, ready to go. Um, I also keep all the lens caps on. You may have noticed I label, I put a piece of uh, gaffer tape, colorful gaff tape, and I write the lens on it so I know exactly what lens this is. Again, when I've got four or five lenses in my bag sticking up like that, I want to be able to see which lens is which so I know which, you know, I can quickly grab whatever lens I want without having to look at each one. Um, that's a really inexpensive way to, uh, to do that. Um, but I put the, the, the caps on. Uh, some photographers don't do that. That drives me crazy. Looking at a lens in the bag where you're just seeing the glass, like just seeing that, that's scary to me. <laughs> like I don't wanna, cause I wanna be able to reach in and grab it and not have to worry about sticking my finger on that thing and getting oil all over it or something falling from, from you know, another part of the bag and getting in there. So I put those caps on, obviously the back cap and the front cap. So, uh, and especially on the bodies, of course. Uh, some photographers also, the, the cameras will come with a little hot shoe cover. Um, just to protect this uh, this connector here, this uh, this little uh, you know electronic connector for the flash, uh, I honestly I take those off when I first get the camera and I proceed to lose it immediately. Uh, I don't know where any of those are. Uh, if that's something you if you don't shoot flash very often and you want to cover that up, it will definitely help protect it. But I would say just buy a whole bunch of them and keep them in your bag so when you lose them you know where they are. Um, as far as one thing I forgot to mention about caps, um, there's just a little sidebar that I do always. So when you take your cap off to shoot, sometimes I see photographers throw the cap in their bag and oh boy, here's the thing. If you get anything in this part of the cap, just dust or a piece of sand or whatever, uh, a loose screw in your bag or something, and then you put that back on your lens when you're done, that's gonna scratch. So the body cap, the one that comes off the body, right? This cap right here and the back lens cap uh, from back there, those two pieces, of course, because they're made to fit together, the lens and the body, they fit together. And you can screw that, you just screw them together, and it stays together, and those two pieces are locked together. So when, my, when I take my gear out of my bag and I put that lens on that body, I immediately screw those together. First of all, uh, they stay together. So at the end of the day, I know I've got a set for each lens body combination. And then also, it keeps dust and dirt and anything else from getting in there. So. That's a good little sidebar tip, um, just to protect your sensor and the, the uh, glass, the back glass, back lens element there. A um, Couple more things, some photographers will use things like this. This is a lens wrap or a body wrap. Um, it's a soft material that you can actually wrap around the body and the lens, either before you put it in your case or just to, I guess, to carry. Um, you may notice this one is in good shape. Uh, this is from the White House News Photographers Association that I was given maybe 20 years ago, and I have never used it. I don't use these. Um, I've only kept this as a souvenir, um, but uh, to me, it's just an extra bulk that's really not necessary. Uh, it is extra protection for sure, and if you're super paranoid, go for it. But I also, I can't see my lenses again. I won't know which lens is which. If they're all wrapped up, I won't know which body is which. So I will uh, not cover those. I feel like because I'm using good cases and I've got those dividers all set up properly, I feel like that's gonna be enough protection for me. So I don't use those wraps, but I am keeping these because I have two of these, they're kind of cool. Um, and then uh, straps, you wanna make sure, of course, you get a good strap. You don't wanna have, have your gear fall 
um, when you are shooting. I did a video about straps recently, so I'll put, of course, that link below. And of course, all the gear I talk about, as always, the links are down below if you're interested in that. But get a good strap. Um, I will use something like this Domke strap for if I'm just shooting with a single camera. More often than not, I'm shooting with two bodies, and I use the hold fast strap. It's a whole big system that really works well uh, dividing the weight, and also there's a safety on there. So um, I don't have it on this. Oh yeah, I do. So most of my cameras I have put on little key rings like this, and I will use that uh, to attach my safety to it. So that way, if the strap does break, which things happen, I will feel it pull on that safety before it hits the ground. So that'll give me a chance to grab it before it really does any damage. So pay attention to stuff like that, get good straps, and it'll be good to go. Look, at the end of the day, here's the thing. Gear, it's a tool. Um, I use it hard and I, I put it through, you know, I use good gear because I'm gonna put, uh, I put demands on it and I'm out in the elements and I'm getting banged into at concerts and sporting events and things like that. So one more thing, you gotta have insurance, really. I mean, if you do this professionally, you've gotta have your gear insured. If it's just a hobby, uh, it's possible that your homeowner's insurance will cover your gear, um, but don't quote me on that. Look at, read, make sure you read the fine print. I have heard from more than one photographer who uses their gear for business, uh, just if you make any kind of money with your gear, that their homeowners will not cover that. So you may need a separate policy. Depending on how much gear you have, it actually can be quite affordable. It's worth it for peace of mind. If something does break, um, you can just get it replaced under your insurance policy. Canon uh, has their own insurance policy called Canon Care Pack that will replace gear. Again, read all the fine print with insurance, um, but I know that uh, Canon does a good job with that. Also, there are programs like in Canon's case, it's called Canon Professional Services, CPS, Nikon has one. I'm sure Sony has a similar system. And if you have a good amount of gear, a certain amount of gear, you can qualify for different levels. And something like CPS will give you faster turnaround time on repairs. Sometimes they'll give you discounts on, on gear, uh, excuse me, on repairs. And also you might get loaner gear while your thing's being replaced or being repaired. So there's just different options like that. You can look up all that stuff and that's gonna help you out. So really all of those things put together, you know, you're gonna do as best job you can protecting all of your gear. I don't think it's ever gonna be pristine. Once it's used, it's like a car. As soon as you drive it off the lot, it loses value. But as long as my gear is functional and in relatively good shape, this lens is probably, I don't know, seven, eight years old now. And the outside looks pretty good. The hood is all beat up, right? It's all, uh, it's got all kinds of marks on the hood. The lens itself looks good. And of course the glass is in perfect shape. So, um, you know, as long as you just keep an eye on it and do all the things that I talked about here, you'll be good to go. So thanks so much. Remember, uh, if you're not already an Adorama TV subscriber, go ahead and click that button down below. Use the little bell icon. You'll be notified as soon as new photo shows come out all week long. Keep your photo questions coming in at askdavidbergman.com. I appreciate you voting for me in the iHeartRadio Music Awards. You can do that every single day. That certainly uh, is going to help me out. And then I'll be back here next time with a brand new question. I hope you'll join me right back here on Ask David Bergman. <laughs>